We're going to record and welcome. I'm so glad to have everybody on the call tonight. Um, just a couple of quick administrative things. I think I know everybody on the call right now, but if not, I'm Melissa Kramer and I'm glad to have you. Um, so welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you had any potentials who were on the call, the Zoom call we had last Wednesday, it was awesome. We had 50 some odd people on there. A bunch were ambassadors, but we also had a bunch of potentials on there. So um, we posted all the names and numbers that Crystal could grab off of the um, Zoom call for us. If you had someone on that call, be sure to follow up with them. And we're going to talk about follow-up tonight, but um, it's absolutely imperative that when you have somebody on a call like that, you follow up with them and ask them their plan of action. Which did you feel like would be best for you to be a preferred customer or to be an ambassador? What did you like about you know our products? Which products did you really think would be great for you, et cetera? Asking questions that are going to draw them in and sort of not force them because we can't force anyone to do anything, but like mentally kind of angle them into, oh yeah, I should do this. Which do I want to do? A preferred customer or an ambassador or whatever else. So um, super important that you do that. And then um, we have, in case anyone on here is not in it and wants to be in it, we have a group that is totally 100% focused on helping you go silver this month or silver again. So if you're not in that and you want to be, please private message me after the call and I can get you in that and just have a little bit of work to get caught up on. And then um, in that group, we have been talking, talking about doing Facebook pajama parties or whatever you want to call them, where it is a Facebook party that you invite your friends to an event on Facebook. Nobody has to go anywhere. It's not even a Zoom. It's just on Facebook. So hopefully, if you're in that group, you've set a date to do one of those parties. If you are not in that group, um, check with me and we'll see if your upline is in that group and they are doing a party or I will do um, some parties for some of you as well if you do not have somebody in one of those groups that's going to do it. So I just wanted you to know those are some options for you. And I wanted to welcome Tammy on the call. Where is she? There she is. I'm meeting you, girl. There she is. Hey. So Hi. Tammy is going to share her testimony tonight with us real quick, and then we are going to get into the meat of our training. So go ahead, Tammy. Oh, okay. Hi, my name's Tammy. Um, basically, uh, I was very skeptical about Plexus, but I did it mainly because my daughter was doing it, and I wanted to support her but I really wasn't looking for the products to actually help me. So much to my surprise, they did. Um, so I started off with the triplex and um, the ease capsules and the ease cream. And I have X Factor in mine. And then my husband um, has those, but he also has the Mega X. But I'm off three medications, cut one medication um, in half. Um, my story basically is I had chronic fatigue, I have chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, um, along with some other things, but I was spending about, I don't know, three to five days a week in bed at the time before I started Plexus. And um, soon after about a month on Plexus, I noticed that I was out of bed all the time and, and um, my husband and I were going and doing things and um so there's been a lot of subtle changes, but that was the big thing for me. The ease capsules um, enabled me to come off of my narcotic pain medication, which I was so thankful for. Um, my doctor was always pushing me to go up on it uh, because I always had pain even taking that and I did not want to. So the ease capsules takes care of that for me. Uh, some days are worse than others and I might take more than a couple of pills, but Typically, I take one in the morning, one at night, and it takes care of it. Um, just uh, for me and my husband, his medicines are being adjusted all the time with, with the VA. And um, we're able, it's sustained energy. So I don't have crashes from taking it, you know, like you don't take it and have all this energy and then, you know, hit a brick wall. So I'm just uh, in love with Plexus. And now I do it not just because of my daughter, but I do it for us. And it's just awesome. Yay, I love that. <laughs> and you said, I think you might have touched on this a little bit, but you said that you used to, if you did anything today, you'd be in bed all day tomorrow, right? Oh, yeah, I couldn't do anything. Like I, I, um, I used to wash my hair every day and, you know, stuff like that. And I just couldn't do any of that. And 
Um, it's not that I don't ever have days that I don't do much, but I'm out of the bed and I can go and do. And, and usually if I did anything exerting wise, I would be like, even if I count my grandkids where even if I didn't get on the floor and play with them, but just had them here, the stress of just being, you know, in charge of somebody small and, and, you know, looking after them and all that, I'd be in bed two or three days afterwards. So I don't have that anymore. I can go to their school and do functions with them. They can come home and stay with me. And I'm not, a, you know, Mitzi doesn't have to worry about, oh no, once I go get mom, she's going to be in bed for two or three days. So it's just been wonderful for me. Yay. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. And I think it's funny that you joined. I mean, I think it's awesome that you joined for your daughter and we're a total skeptic and now we're not. And now your mom's totally not a skeptic anymore either. Oh, no. no, because um, just for, just to add to that testimony, um, I went up to their house and they had heard me and Mitzi talk about it for several months. And in fact, she just said, I just didn't even want to hear the word anymore. They were just so skeptical. But I went up and I helped my stepdad clean out their garage and two rooms and two sheds. And we had a garage sale. And typically, if I'd had one day of being out there in that garage working in it, I'd have been in bed for three or four days. But I was there all week. Now, I was tired and give out and <laughs> all of that. And when I came home, I didn't do a whole lot for about a week or so. But I wasn't in bed, sick, throwing up, couldn't move, couldn't eat and all that like I normally would have been. And so they started saying, you know, she did all of that. So there must be something to this. And so that's what started them to looking into it. But like it was like six months after Mitzi started uh, the, you know, started it into Plexus that they even tried anything and now they won't go without it. Like she called me today to make sure I ordered her products already. So <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I love it. It's a great little ripple effect going through your family. Yes, it, is. it really is. Awesome. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks for sharing. Hey, y'all have to tell me when I'm muted. I know I see Beth going, um, I don't hear you. Okay, so yeah, you're muted, you're muted. Okay, so just kidding, let's try again. I see you're all messaging me, can't hear you? Okay, awesome. Just kidding, I don't know how I muted myself. I think I meant to mute Tammy and I muted me. Okay, blonde moment, you see it, it's for real. All right, so let's try this again. So that goes hand in hand with what I wanted to talk about tonight, um, talking about being a product of the product and just, um, I am gonna go mute Tammy. Oh, she is muted, awesome. Being a product of the product and um, making sure that we know our back to basics. That's what we're talking about tonight. So, with back to basics, if you don't think that you personally necessarily need this, take notes anyway because you are going to need this information to share with your team because once you have at least one ambassador on your team, you are a team leader. And with that, you need to be ready to help them with their basics as much as you have to um, help yourself. So either way, this is good information for you. So back to basics. First thing is posting on Facebook. Not only do we need to post on Facebook every day, but there's some kind of rules that go along with that. We need to be a smart poster. So we don't need to post 10 times a day. We need to post about Plexus one or two times a day. You don't want to scare off everybody in your news feed. You don't want them to hide you or start ignoring you or just not even paying attention. It's like, oh, there she is with another one of those Plexus posts. I'm not even going to read it. We want what we have to say to be engaging. We want it to be personal. Share as many times a week as you can something personal. Oh man, I woke up this morning and didn't need any coffee. What a great feeling. Or gosh, I was up late so you know, so late watching the game last night, still got up this morning and felt great. Thank you, Plexus. Or, you know, got my 1099. I was thinking about that today. Got my 1099 in the mail and man, am I awesome, you know, happy that I made money while posting on Facebook last year you know, or made money while helping my friends and family or whatever. There's lots of different ways that you can post about how Plexus is helping you 
your children, your grandchildren, your spouse, your cousin, whoever it is, all of that means as much as it does when you're sharing testimonies, which are great as well. So share testimonies of all different kinds of illnesses. Don't get hung up on only sharing about migraines because you have migraines. Or don't get hung up on not sharing about men because you're not a man, you know what I mean? Or if you are a man, not sharing about women's issues. Like lots and lots and lots of different health um, testimonies out there that we need to be sharing. Be sure every day that you're sharing personal non-Plexus things on Facebook. Don't fall away from being who you were before Plexus. You don't want people to look at your news feed or look at your timeline on your page and go, oh my gosh, she has nothing to say except this Plexus stuff. So be sure you're posting about your kids or your grandkids or something funny that happened or where you went or, you know, whatever it is, life. Just post life because that's what Facebook was before Plexus. So that's what it still has to be. Um, what else do I want to say posting about Plexus? Oh, read your posts before you put them up. Make sure that they don't say, I have such and such disease when you don't really have it. Or, hey, look at Celeste, she's my best friend when you don't even know Celeste. Don't just copy a testimony and not read it and not make it somewhat personal from you. Hey, you know, this is an amazing testimony from this girl Celeste or, you know, whatever. But don't have it say, this is my best friend, if you don't even know the person because you didn't, all you did was copy and paste from someone else. Don't hit the share button. We always personalize and copy and paste a testimony. I have a lot of people who grab testimonies off of my page and share them. All you're doing is pushing those people in your newsfeed back to me because they're going to click through and they're going to go, oh, who's this Melissa Kramer girl that, you know, we just, you know, whoever just shared this post from. So copy and paste and make it yours. Um, so that's all about posting smart on Facebook. I think that's it for that. Um, so our next thing, number two, is reaching out and following up. Because you're posting smart on Facebook, you're going to have people who are going to ask you about Plexus. So you need to be ready to make a list of those people. Keep a list of everyone who has ever asked you about Plexus. It can just be in, you know, in your daily planner. In the back of the planner, there's always those extra pages. You can start making your list there. It can be in a notebook, whatever. But don't think, oh, I'm going to remember. She asked me. I don't need to write it down. No, you're not. You're not. Even the most organized people are not going to remember when someone asks them about Plexus because it's going to, time's going to go by and you're going to have new people asking you and you're not going to remember who asked you about it two months ago, three months ago. So make that list and keep everybody on the same list. You need to follow up with those potentials who ask you about Plexus. Do not think that they asked you, you answered, they didn't order, oh man, that's it. Got to get that sale. That's not at all how this works. Plexus is about building relationships. It's about keeping connection with people. And it's absolutely necessary that you recognize right now that it's going to take 8 to 12, sometimes even more times of following up with someone before they're going to buy. It's just a basic sales statistic. It takes eight to 12 times following up. So that wasn't two times following up, and that wasn't three times following up. Eight to 12 times following up. And to me, that was like crazy when I learned that because I honestly had no idea that people need that much time to follow up on something, but they do, and it really, <laughs> it really does work. Um, some ways to follow up with people would be to share a testimony with them privately that you're like, gosh, this testimony totally reminded me of you, and then send it. Or, um, hey, we have an event coming up. Would you like to go with me? I'm going to be doing this Facebook party. I just added you to the event. I hope you'll join me. Like, there's, You don't have to keep saying, hey, are you interested in Plexus? Hey, are you still interested in Plexus? You know, you don't have to do that. There's lots of different ways. Now, you can sometimes say, you know, have you given any more thought to the Plexus products? Which one intrigues you the most? Or I'm giving away samples of the pink drink. Would you be interested in trying some? Um, there's lots of different things that you can say when you follow up so you don't feel like you're a broken record. And also engage with that person personally. Like things on their Facebook wall. Comment on them. They're real friends of yours. That's why you're Facebook friends. So don't let your relationship become just Plexus. Nothing but Plexus. Be intentional 
in making sure they know you're more than just plexus. Um, and sometimes I've had people that I've liked or commented on something on their newsfeed having nothing to do with plexus. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know, I forgot I was going to follow up with you. And you know, I had this question or whatever. Um, reach out to friends who you want to do this business with you. Lots and lots of ambassadors have done this. They reach out to their, you know, best five friends or whatever, their girlfriends or their, you know, guy pals that, you know, they love doing life with. And they specifically say, gosh, I have this amazing business. I am loving doing this, but you know what would make it better is if you and I were doing this together. Do you have 15 minutes for me to tell you about these amazing products that I've found? I think you're absolutely going to love them. It doesn't have to be anything big, but you know, I was telling somebody this today. We have products that are going to change people's lives. Every single week we have a testimony on our call that is life changing. So you have something that truly is going to help people. And so it's, you know, it's almost kind of wrong if you don't share it with them, but certainly with your favorite people, you want them to be on those trips with you when you win leaders retreat, when you go to convention, when you, you know, become an emerald and above and you're getting a free trip to Hawaii. Wouldn't it be awesome if you were not only getting a free trip to Hawaii, but doing it with your best friends. So reach out and invite them into doing this with you. Um, it certainly can't hurt. What's the worst they're going to say is no, thanks. It's not for me. That's okay. You're still going to be great friends. Um, but it can't hurt to ask them. All right, so we're reaching out to people. We always say also, find new Facebook friends. Um, when you meet someone just in your day-to-day -day interactions, find a way to friend them on Facebook, whether it is someone you already know and you look them up and intentionally friend them just because, you know, I know, you know, my next door neighbor, but for whatever reason, she wasn't my Facebook friend, I'm gonna go add her. Um, I meet a new lady who I become friends with at the park. Instead of saying, hey, what's your phone number? Because, you know, I mean, I don't know if you're like me, but I won't ask somebody for their phone number. But I might say, hey, are you on Facebook? Would you, would you find yourself on my phone? And, you know, let's be friends on Facebook, whatever. Let's meet up again to go to the park or, you know, whatever it is. Um, it's very easy and very um, not pushy, not direct, not in your face, you know, to just say to somebody, are you on Facebook? You know, can you find yourself or whatever? So um, it's a great way to interact with people, connect with people. It's a great way to then message them. Hey, it was so nice to meet you today. You know, loved hanging out with you and your daughter at the park, whatever it is. And then don't say anything about Plexus. Don't be salesy. It's just gonna naturally happen because they're gonna have no choice but to see what you do through your, you know, your newsfeed, your own, posting on Facebook. So we're reaching out to people, we're following up with people. When somebody, this is kind of sort of an aside, but when somebody is ready to order the product, so you've followed up and they're finally at that point where they want to order, if they are going to, well, let me put it this way, you need to qualify them as to whether they would be a good customer or a good ambassador. And the basic qualification, we've gone through a lot of trainings on this, but it's something we always are gonna to touch on again, Basic qualifications are to be an ambassador, you need to have 100 PV go through your website every single month. So if a person is going to be on the triplex or something equivalent to the triplex, so it might be X Factor, ProBio, and Slim, or, um, you know, whatever. I have a girl who's just order is ordering today um, enough shakes to do it for a month. So she's going to have over 100 PV. All she wants to do is just shakes every single day. That's going to be what she starts with, whatever. So but whatever it is they take, it has to be over 100 PV a month, or they have to plan to begin to work the business immediately. I have had people who said, I don't know what my family is going to take, but I am going to work this business. I know this is going to work. I need the money. You know, obviously they're a great ambassador, but they have to know you have a $100 minimum every month. If they're gonna be somebody who is going to be coming in just for the wholesale or may or may not work the business, 100 PV or higher. So a triplex or something equivalent is making a good ambassador. Anything less needs to be a preferred customer. I always, if they qualify, I always offer both. I always say, hey, here's the information about preferred customer. And because you're gonna get the triplex or you know, equivalent, here's the information about being an ambassador. And I make sure they know a customer has a 60 day money back guarantee, an ambassador does not. A customer has no minimum, 
an ambassador has a hundred dollar minimum every month. Make sure those things are clear. Um, another thing, I hope you can't hear Aiden screaming in the background. Another thing, no good. <laughs> another thing is um, just slipped right out of my head. We'll come back to whatever that other thing was because I don't know because I can hear him screaming. All right, so number three, have a goal, have goals and have a plan. So you have to have goals and you have to have a plan to achieve them. One thing you need, regardless of what your goals are, is consistency. You need consistency in taking your products. You have to be a product of the products in order for this business to work for you. You cannot long-term share products that you clearly are not consistent with because people will feel that. They'll know that, they'll see that, they'll see you're saying you don't crave sweets anymore, but you were just at the, you know, Wendy's eating, drinking a Diet Coke, or they will just see that, you know, one day you're saying that everything's great and the next day you're saying you're dying of the flu. You know, they'll, they'll see those inconsistencies and they'll be like, mm, does this really work? And it's not that it doesn't work, it's that you're not being consistent. So you have to be consistent with the products. Um, you have to be consistent in posting on Facebook. This is not a every few days I post on Facebook kind of business because it's just not going to work for you. You might get a customer or two. You might pay for your own products, but you're not going to be able to work a real business and make the potential money that you could, that you can if you consistently spend 15 minutes a day on this business. I'm in no way saying you need to spend hours and hours on this business. I am absolutely saying give it 15 minutes a day, every single day, seven days a week. You can schedule that time and go, okay, I am doing 15 minutes after the kids go to bed every single night. That's fine. Or you can say, you know what? I can fit 15 minutes in while I'm driving to work, while I'm, you know, doing the laundry, while I'm cooking dinner, what, whatever it might be that you can go, oh, I can totally listen to a call or do my Facebook post or follow up with people using, you know, Facebook Messenger, the audio voice recording thing um, while I'm doing X, Y, and Z. It doesn't matter which way you do it. You can do it in the nooks and crannies, which is how I've grown my entire business up until this point. Or you can schedule the time and go, no, I need to sit down and just work on it at this time. But it has to be consistent. Um, a couple of great goals would be consistency, for sure. To have $500 in PV, because that will get you to the 25% sales commission um, club. And that's a great place to be. 25% commission is much better than 15. And so you might as well have a goal of that. And then going silver is a fantastic goal. And if you don't know a whole lot about going silver, um, there are many, many YouTube uh, trainings on going silver specifically. So you can look up on YouTube Plexus going silver and or Plexus silver, and you will find lots of trainings on that. I've even posted some of my team page before. Number four thing is growing. It's super important that you are watching trainings, that you are listening to calls, and again, you can do this at a set time every day if that works better for you, or you can do it in the nooks and crannies of your life. I have headphones that I plug into my phone and stick my phone in my back pocket and my jeans, and I literally will walk around and cook dinner and sort laundry and do whatever nonsense I have to do with the earbuds in my ears, listening to a training, um, even YouTube videos. You don't need to watch them. You just need to listen to them. There's nothing on this you're going to need to watch later. You would just want listen to it. Um, read personal development books, listen to them. If you like Audible, that's totally fine as well. But you have to be willing to grow yourself in order to be successful in this business. Um, there's MLM Nation, which is a podcast. It's a great way to listen to just MLM information. You can learn and grow in that. Lots and lots of books you can read. I could go on and on. I could do a whole training just on all the amazing books you can read. But some great ones to start are GoPro by Eric Warre, it's an amazing MLM book. And um, Sarah Robbins, neither one of these are Plexus people, this is just basic MLM information. Sarah Robbins has um, How to Grow Your Network Marketing Business. Somebody put it in the chat for us, please. I know you guys, like half of you know what this book is. But if somebody can stick that in there, I can't remember um, what the name of her book is, but it's an amazing one, and I'm sure somebody will add it. Um, okay. And let me see what else I want to say. And be okay. Yeah, this one's really important. Be okay reaching outside of your comfort zone. 
All the really great stuff in life, honestly, happens outside of your comfort zone. So it could be something small as like, I used to not talk to anybody in the grocery store. No one, no one. I would avoid everyone like the plague. I didn't even like to talk to people. I mean, Matt was just, my husband was just saying last night, because I have a girlfriend who's going to call on Wednesday and she wants to talk to me and she's very introvert. And um, she said, you know, I don't think I can do this. I'm a super introvert. And um, Matt said to me, um, does she know you? <laughs> like, I know. I don't know where like things have just changed. I would never talk to anybody. And then I was like, okay, I can just say hi to somebody. That was just, just, just talk to somebody. I wasn't going to talk about Plexus. I was just going to say hello. And then, you know, once I'm like, oh, well, nothing happened when I said hello. So let's try something else. Let's, you know, do this. Let's do that. It's great. And you will grow so much being willing to get out of your comfort zone. I could not be successful in this business if I had stayed the person I was 19 months ago. Um, it's been a huge blessing just to be willing to do that. So be okay with reaching outside your comfort zone in small little ways every day. And all of a sudden you'll be like, wow, my comfort zone is like really big now. And that's all right. Um, and the big one, number five, and this is a great one. Duplicate. Teach your downline to do these same basic things. They're smart posting on Facebook. They're reaching out and following up. They're having goals and setting a plan. And they're growing. Those are the major four things that everyone needs to do to grow this business. So when you sign a new ambassador, because everyone on this call is going to be doing that this month, because that's what we're all focusing on is going silver. Yep, I see the heads nodding. Um, we're focusing on going silver, we're focusing on signing three new ambassadors or signing three ambassadors, getting them going, going silver. And when we have new ambassadors, we want to make sure they understand all these things too. So sit down with them. Don't just hand them this call. Sit down with them and go through this for 20 or 30 minutes. Invite them to coffee. Invite them on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom. If you are on Zoom right now, you have access to free Zoom anytime you want. You have your own Zoom ID. If you don't know how to use it, contact your upline or contact me. Every single person can do their own Zoom at any time. So get on with Zoom with a girlfriend or whoever joins, whatever. Get on a three-way call with me or with your upline or whatever and um, teach them these very same things. A couple of side notes that I want to just throw in there because they were last-minute thoughts. Um, join some Facebook testimony groups. There are some good ones. Um, Plexus, What's Your Story is one I really like. There are Facebook testimony groups for every issue out there in America. So Plexus and breastfeeding, Plexus and pregnancy, Plexus and ADHD, Plexus and autism, Plexus and anything you can think of, there's a Facebook group for it. Go to the top of your news feed and type in Plexus and whatever the issue is that you're dealing with or someone else is dealing with or you want to post a testimony about and you will find testimonies that way. Um, at the top of any post, click on the carrot, the little downward carrot on anybody's post and you can save the post for later. So they're great testimonies that you can share later because you save them now. So if you see 10 great testimonies today, go save them all by clicking on that carrot and click save post. And then you've got, you know, five or six or seven days worth of testimonies that you can share. Um, we talked about you have to have $100 minimum to stay commission qualified and to be an active ambassador. That's super important. You have to have your backup order turned on. Please, please, please explain backup orders to new ambassadors. Make sure they understand what it is. Make sure they understand why they have to have it on. Make sure they understand that they do not ship if you have 100 PV that goes through your website before that date. So this is not something that they are committing to every month. It is kind of the bare minimum as an ambassador is that $100. So if they've got a customer any day between you know, February 1 and February 24, then the $100 backup order is not going to ship because they have met that $100 minimum qualification. But if you want to be paid, you absolutely have to have that, that backup order on. It doesn't ship. Mine has never shipped in 19 months. I couldn't even tell you what's in my backup order. It has never shipped but I've had it on for 19 months because I plan to get paid every month. So yes, have it on. Um, when you have questions, go search in your back office, go to communications library or communications multimedia library. Those are great sources to find information. 
at the bottom of multimedia library or library. I can't remember which one at this moment. I think it's library. There's something called a knowledge base and that is full of searchable Plexus information. Go look there before you ask your upline or me or anyone else a question. Go search it out a little bit first. Go search through some of those testimony um, groups. You can use the magnifying glass in any group and you can search on keywords. So if you don't know what somebody would take for migraines, go look up some migraine testimonies and see what people take. Um, do a little bit of looking and digging around first before you start asking questions. It'll just be, it'll be better for you because you're going to learn more that way. Um, and you'll learn quicker. And stay in contact with your customers and your teammates. For sure, I used to think, and this is probably going to be the last thing, if you guys have questions, you can add them. Um, I need to read through some of these threads because I'm not sure there's any questions. But I used to think, like in the back of my head, if I just kind of ignore this person, you know, and don't ask them, then maybe, um, you know, if they're happy or unhappy, like, I don't know if she's so happy, so I'm just going to kind of not ask her today. No, no, no. Terrible idea. Do not do that. What you want to do is always be in great communication with your customers and with your ambassadors, and you want to get ahead of any issues they might have. So instead of me waiting a month, to ask if somebody's doing well on the triplex, I'm gonna ask two or three days in, and I'm gonna ask a week or two later, and I'm gonna ask very specific questions. Hey, how do you feel? Are you going to the bathroom every day? Are you drinking your water every day? I'm gonna ask questions that kind of demand a reply, and then from that, you know, if somebody says, gosh, I really feel kind of sluggish, or no, I'm not going to the bathroom every day. Okay, let's adjust, let's do this, let's do that. Don't wait until a month in and they've gone, you know, they've gone a month and they're like, I hardly went to the bathroom and I didn't feel any better and da, da, da. Then you're going to lose them. So grab them in the beginning and deal right from the beginning with any challenges they might be seeing. They're going to really appreciate that and they're going to do better and be more successful on the products. You know, these products are um, not cookie cutter. They're going to work differently for different people taking them at different times of day, whatever. So you have to work with people on that. So stay in great contact with people. Don't stalk them. But keep constant communication with people. Don't ignore them, whether it's your new customers or your new ambassadors. Because remember, new ambassadors who have never tried the products before are essentially like new customers. They still need that same support, that same hand-holding, because they don't know how to take the products either. So be there for them as much as you would for a new customer. Just like you would help your mama, you have to help your new customers and your new ambassadors. So... Um, uh, Beth said two of my all-time best friends and college roommates became ambassadors. They want to go to Vegas. Awesome. I love that. Um, and the challenges do hold you responsible. They are very great. I love them as well. Rock your network marketing business. Yes, yes. Thank you, Renee. Um, okay, so if I don't get my backup order unless I have my... If I don't get my backup order unless I have less than $100 in sales, what do I need to get my own products every month? Um, oh, okay, I understand, sorry, that took me a second. Okay, so, totally understand that one. If you have over $100 in sales in the month, then right, your backup order is not gonna ship because it is called a conditional backup order. So everyone, in order to be paid, has to have a conditional backup order on. So, if you want that to be a backup order to be the way you get your products every month, you go back into your back office, so backoffice.plexusworldwide.com. You click on shopping, and then you go to backup order. You already have that conditional backup order. So the conditional backup order is going to pop up on your screen, and you are going to click add new backup order. You are going to add an unconditional order. An unconditional order means it's going to ship whether you have Zero PV or 5,000 PV or anything in between. It is unconditional. It will ship every single month unconditionally. So you the unconditional backup order. Then you are finding the products you want. And then you need to click, you know, go back to your shopping cart, see everything that's in your shopping cart of your backup order. And up at the top left-hand corner, you're going to change the date, the exact date you want that unconditional order to ship. 
So if you joined on, say, the 4th of January and you wanted, and that's a bad example, the day's already gone by, but say you joined on the 12th of January and in February you've already gotten a customer and you need products for, you know, February 12th. Go in and create this unconditional backup order and have your um, backup order date be like tomorrow or whatever. And so that will, um, that will allow that to ship to you unconditionally every month on that day of the month. And then at the very end, once you've picked your date, you hit update at the bottom and that will save it. And then it will process on the date you chose every month. So I hope that helps you. Oh, and Cindy's going to PM you as well, but that's your answer anyway. Um, and good for anybody else who wanted to know. So um, how do we know when our customers actually get their products? Great question. So pretty soon, knock on wood, we are going to be able to see tracking numbers. We were told that we will be able to see tracking numbers in the future. And um, so we will be able to look at our customer report. In our back office, we go to reports, then go to customer report. And you can see every single customer. If you click on their name, you can see all their orders. They pop up like a little screen just about them. And you can click on orders and you can see all their orders. Pretty soon we should be able to see tracking information on that as well. Right now, your customers can see tracking information. Eh, hit or miss, kind of 50-50 um, on when we can see that. But customers will be able to see their tracking information before we will because that's actually a field that's already been created and does populate pretty often, not every time. So right now, customers can sort of see it. They will be the first ones to see it, and then we will be able to see it in the future. Um, I don't think it should make it hard to follow up, honestly, because what I do, um, and hopefully this will help you, is from the day they order, I wait about five days, and then I check in with them. Um, maybe three to five days and I say hey if you don't have your products yet I know they're on their way and you should have them any day or I assume they're on their way you don't have to say something I don't know but you know they should be on their way and you should have them any day let me tell you how to take them and then they're either going to reply yep I have them or no I don't and so then if you feel you know if it's been five days and you're like hmm, I might as well just call and check on that then you can jump right on and you don't even have to tell them but you can just jump right on with customer service I waited today midday for eight minutes one time and for about 13 the next so you know everybody should be able to find eight minutes in their day whether it's driving to work or whatever they're open 13 hours a day I think so you should be able to find eight minutes a day to call customer service and check on something that hasn't shown up and then you can find out from there. But I always mark in my calendar the day that they order, and I mark to follow up. I do, you know, four or five days later. Follow up with them, give them their product information, exactly how they're gonna take them. And then if they say, yep, it came yesterday, or yes, it came today, or whatever, okay, great. You know, I'll check in with you in another couple days. Or if it didn't come in, then you know exactly, you know, call customer service, then get back with them, hey, I heard the tracking number, it's gonna be to you tomorrow. Or there was a little delay, blah, 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 you know, whatever it is. So um, hopefully that will help you. But I don't think that has to make it hard to follow up. Um, it, we have a little bit of lack of information, but you can definitely still um, follow up pretty consistently with people, even with that lack of information. Um, I think most preferred customers are getting their discounts. I haven't heard of anybody not getting their discounts. Um, if you have an issue, again, the wait was only eight minutes today, so I would call. Um, I would call and see about it. You know, in the past, for previous months, there were issues, and you had to call and get the refunds. But my understanding is going forward, from like I think it was December, maybe January, that everybody was getting their refunds or their ten percent discounts um, automatically. So um, let me know if that is not true and we can, I mean, if we have tons of them, we can just make one call. But as far as I know, there aren't any, um, except maybe yours, Heather, sorry. Melissa, it's Brandy. Um, Jonathan, my husband wasn't getting his 10%. So I called last week and they said, well, you know, the automated thing, they said that um, they were having nor abnormally high call volume and I only held for 16 minutes. Yeah. They got it all fixed. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah, the hold hasn't been. I think they're going to take that little automated. We're having an unusually high call volume off soon because they really, it's decreased a ton. So it's really pretty fantastic. Um, 
Yeah, I'm glad they got that all fixed. I think going forward, it is all fixed. I think it was just older people who transitioned over from the old system to the new system. It didn't roll over properly, but new people, when they get to the three, the three consecutive months, in that fourth month, then this new system automatically does that for them. So it's just those people who rolled over from the old system into the new system who have issues. Just us old people. Yep, just us old people. Um, anybody else have any questions? Going once, going twice. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for being on the call. I hope this helped you. And again, pass this along to your new ambassadors. Make it, um, you know, make it a priority to help train your ambassadors. That is your job as their leader. And I know you guys are going to do awesome with that. So thanks so much. Have a great night.